This video is before and after shots and progress video of me shaving my hands yesterday on live. This footage is actually of my fingertips two days ago when I cut them down and you can see they're kind of red and inflamed looking. That's just the blood rushing in after you relieve the pressure of the callus, but that'll disappear pretty quickly. Here's my right hand ready to be shaved. It's starting to feel tight. It's starting to get thick along the edges. And um, so I'm ready to take it off. Although there are some thin spots like over here where I'm gonna have to be really careful while I shave it really getting hard to bend and uncomfortable so i'd rather take it off this has been about 10 days since the last shave for reference this is a photo from one of my followers who gave me permission to share it this is exactly what my hands look like if i don't shave them at all it looks like she's probably using um, a nail file or exfoliating tools to just take off the outer layer but look how thick her finger pads are i bet she can't feel almost anything with her fingertips here is me giving an example of how hard it is to make a fist. I can squeeze it tighter, but it really hurts. That's about as good as I can do with my right hand versus this is my left hand having just been shaved. Look how much tighter that fist is. So much flexibility and mobility in my left hand because it was just shaved and my right hand is really struggling to make a fist. And I also am losing sensation in my right hand. You can see um, how deftly I wield this tool that y'all are so terrified of me using. Um, chalk it up to 20 plus years of experience using this thing. I'm very comfortable with it. And you can see I can take off these thin, thin, thin little layers, which allow me to get like the exact thickness on my hands that I want and a really refined shave so that I have sensitivity and mobility and just total function of my hands, which I consider a privilege because as you saw in that photo, most people with this condition cannot move their hands very much, cannot feel much with their hands. And it's very very uncomfortable. It pushes against the nails. It pushes against all the joints. Here's my hand side by side, one shaved, one not. You can see I cut myself. That is just because I was on live shaving my hands and I was paying more attention to the chat than to my hands. So whoops, but they're actually really surface little nicks and they will disappear really quickly. You'll see in the after photos and they don't hurt. They're just bleeding because I got to a blood vessel or something by accident. Um, right hand, time to shave this one. And the other one is just freshly shaved and again, red and swollen looking, but only because the callus has just been taken off and the blood rushes in after it's taken off and kind of revitalizes the whole area. So I know they look really red and irritated, but they actually feel fine. And the redness will disappear slowly over the next couple of days. This is this morning and they feel amazing. You can see the redness in my fingertips from two days ago, trimming and clipping the tops and around the fingertips is already basically disappeared. These little bits that are starting to pop up on the tops, those are what I call frays. I'll have to trim those off today, um, but they're feeling great. Hello everyone. I'm having to put a trigger warning on my videos now because they keep getting flagged. So you have been warned. I am shaving the callus off of my skin and I know it's not for everyone, but for those of you who are here and following along and enjoy this journey, I'm so glad you're here with me. I'm making this video for two reasons. To tell you I'm doing a live tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific Coast time to shave my hands again and answer all of your questions. And I did a terrible job doing this time lapse. This is the day I shaved them and I just forgot to take pictures. This was January 22nd, three days later, still looking about the same. And then this was January 26th. You can see how it's starting to get yellow and get thicker. And then this is today, just about as thick as I'll let them go, maybe a few more days, but I decided to schedule a live. So here we are. I'll see you tomorrow if you can join me. And I guess we'll close this video with showing you a picture of what they look like after a shower in case you were curious. See you there. Oh, I feel like this video is going to upset a lot of nail techs and callous pros out there. It does not grow thicker if I clip it off. It does not grow thicker if I shave it off. My skin is going to overproduce keratin at an astounding rate, whether or not I cut it. So I think it's probably wiser to remove it and have comfort. What you're seeing here is my routine in between hand shavings. I shave all the skin off my hands about every two weeks, sometimes even less depending on how fast it's growing. Um, but in between hand shavings, I'll do what I call fingertip maintenance. I got to work on my fingertips. And it's because as the skin grows thicker, it becomes really uncomfortable to bend my fingers and curl my hands because of the resistance of the thick skin pushing up against my nails. So I thin it out. Um, it helps me retain sensitivity in my fingertips because as the callus gets thicker, I start to lose all sensation in my fingertips and then I, I really don't have the nimble dexterity that I want. So clipping this skin off, it stops the discomfort of the callus pushing up against my nails, um, but it also adds to my function, my mobility, 
and my sensitivity, which I like to keep. Do I need to do this? No. Have there been times where I just shave my hands every two weeks and I don't do any maintenance in between? Yes, especially if I'm really busy. But if I'm not, or if I'm making videos for TikTok and I have an excuse to take that time, even if I am really busy and don't necessarily have the time, um, I will take the time to clip my fingertips down because it feels so good. It feels like such a relief. There seem to be a lot of people with strong opinions about how I should not be removing this callus this way. I shouldn't be shaving it. I shouldn't be clipping it down along the edges. It's just going to make it grow thicker. And I'm sorry to tell you, but regardless of what I do to this skin, it is always going to overproduce keratin at an astronomical level. And um, I'd rather have sensation in my fingers. And I'd rather have the ability to do fine tasks with my fingertips and actually feel what I'm doing. If you don't maintain it this way, it will grow so thick that your nails might not even grow normally anymore. And it also will grow so thick that um, you can't even make a fist. So this is just an hour I take for myself um, every other week, in, the, in between the every other week that I'm shaving my hands to make this way more comfortable and functional for me. And now I'll just leave you with the uh, ASMR of the rest of my right hand fingertips that I did yesterday. I love you all so much. Thank you for following. Your support has blown me away. Absolutely mind-blowing. And also I've been able to connect with a couple dozen people on here who have this exact thing and never in my life have I met anyone who has it. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful little way um, my life has changed in the last few days.
I've mentioned to you guys before how like the skin will grow up the sides of my fingernails and sort of start flaking off and make these little flaps of skin that just drive me absolutely nuts. It's been about 10 days since I shaved my hands in this video. And um, so they're starting to feel a little thick, but not like thick enough to actually shave my hands and go in and do a full detail around my fingers. And this is one opportunity to show you when I will use a sanding tool because it does this job so well. This whole process took me about 20 minutes and I've sped it up quite a bit here for you to see. But it, with this nail drill, I'm able to come in with, a, I think this is 150 grit, and I'm able to get all those little bits of skin off and just also thin down my fingertips so that I kind of retain sensation and flexibilities them as the skin begins to grow out. Um, the real only drawback with using a sander like this is it gets so hot. I mean, it's just, I have to kind of go really lightly and do it in little tiny bits and move around very quickly because otherwise it gets really hot and it will really hurt but it does a great job. And I know I've been railing on shaving, uh, or I mean sanding recently with using sanding tools to do like my whole hand or my whole foot because it is so time consuming and because it does get so hot and it doesn't leave as thin a finish as shaving does. But for doing these little details mid process of shaving, you know, between shaves, this is a great way just to kind of keep my fingertips smooth. And also, I don't want to bash on all the people who are telling me to try sanding it down because frankly, Basically, everybody I've ever met who has EPPK uses a Dremel to get their skin down. We all seem to find that like nail sanders and electric, cal electric callus shavers don't do the job well enough, but a Dremel will. And the biggest complaint, though, is that it gets really hot and it does take a long time. So shaving is my preferred method, but look at this. It's doing a great job of getting my fingernails down. I mean, the skin around my fingernails down. You know how like if you have some peeling skin on your fingertips or you have a jagged nail, like you kind of can't stop picking at it or biting at it. I will get the same way as my hands get thicker and thicker. I will start picking and nibbling at them and it just makes a disaster of my fingertips. So look at that. Nice and smooth. The sander did a wonderful job. Only took about 20 minutes and this will last me till my next shave. There was a gal in my comments yesterday with EPPK who was arguing that you shouldn't take it off and you shouldn't do anything. She said it's very common where she lives. It's called hardy hands and her doctor tells her she shouldn't take it off at all and she should run her hands under water to keep them moist. And while I appreciate that where she lives, it's common enough that it's accepted as normal, that's awesome. But this, that is not good advice. And I want to talk about that. You can see my hands are 15 days from being shaved and they're starting to get hard to bend. And I have all these little frays up on the top of my hands that snag on things that catch. You'll see a couple little cuts because that's where the skin like caught on something while I was reaching into a pocket or getting dressed or something. And for my own comfort and satisfaction of not having my hands snag on everything all the time and getting cuts, I'm going to cut them down and take them off. This takes 10 minutes every few days. I, this, condition is not well studied. I mean, there is research and case studies and literature going back over a hundred years on this and other palmal plantar keratodermas, but it is still, it is still case by case. And I guess that's how you can view my page. This is a case study. This is my anecdotal advice living with this for 38 years. And I have tried nearly everything. And I mean it. I haven't dove into trying many medicines because they continue to be proven to be complicated. But I have tried everything else. I've tried all the tools. I've tried all of the programs. I've tried all the oils, all the creams. Have you tried shea butter, coconut oil, castor oil? Have you tried sanding? Have you tried using a foot file? Yes, 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 yes. I spent my whole childhood with my hands in gloves and socks with Vaseline or castor oil on them, shea butter, coconut oil, etc. I have tried it all. Hemp oil, I've tried it. I've made my own. This can be considered a case study. Uh, now, I have nerded out and read every case study that's ever been done about this disease every single one. I've also read the extensive and very heady and difficult to read genetic literature that's been done about keratodermas of all kinds. Ultimately, it's case by case. Every single person who has this condition has a different situation. Some people's grow very thin and not very fast. 
Other people's grow very, very thick and very fast, and it can be totally debilitating. So if it works for you to just run your hands under water all the time and not ever do anything, more power to you. I mean, that sounds like it takes a lot less time. I can't. This is just two weeks of growth, and it will continue to get thick. When I was a kid, I mean, I didn't shave my hands until I was like seven, and even then it was a poor job because it was done with like a straight face razor as my parents attempted to figure out how to take it off for me. But it will keep getting thicker, and it will keep getting more and more painful, and I will begin to sense less and less, and I won't even be able to hold a pen to write. It will hurt to write, and I'm not willing to live like that. Another woman in the comments uh, helped me understand that she uses a pumice stone daily and then shaves every two months. Again, if that works for you, woohoo! It doesn't work for me. So this is my case study. I'm glad you're following along and learning. So it was definitely time to do my nails. They'd grown out more than two weeks. And also that was me demonstrating how like tough it was getting for me to type on my phone because of the shape of my thumb and the way the nail like kind of gets in the way of tapping on the phone. So anyway, it was time to do it. Many of you have expressed curiosity on how I handle my nails and my cuticles. So I thought I'd just show you. Usually I trim them before I sand the polish off, but I just wasn't in the mood. So I did it all sanding first and then cutting afterward. It can kind of be hard to gauge the correct length when I'm cutting it before sanding it. So this time I just decided to do that. Um, The cuticles that I have grow very similar to the callus. They grow up the side of the nail and along the bottom pretty thick and pretty fast just like my regular nails this is what it looks like after I have done the sanding Um, and I will come in with another tool in a minute and do like all the details around the cuticles but um, I don't know if this is correct don't take this as advice but I just do it this way because it works and a lot of questions have come in asking if I've ever gone to a nail salon and whether I'm like comfortable with that. And actually, I've had great experiences at lots of different nail salons. However, usually I would do my cuticles like with a cuticle pusher and cuticle scissors and trim up my fingertips before I went to the nail salon because in my experience, nail techs generally don't really know how to handle my skin. And when they start trying to clip it back and help me out, they tend to go too deep or they don't really understand what the skin is all about and they can make it uncomfortable for me so I usually do that part myself if I'm going to go get them done in a salon but over the years I've just gotten really into doing my own nails I'm kind of a fan of DIY and I think it's fun and allows me to work on my fingertips and stuff too so I just do it myself I was trying to keep this length that I cut here because that's typically about how short I will cut them when I redo them but I had that one split that was going on and once I tried to like shape it a little bit before repairing it it just started to break off so I decided we were just gonna go super short this time although I did keep the rest of them a little bit longer than that one thumb which had to be pretty short I do do gel nails. I don't soak them off because I absolutely hate soaking my fingertips in acetone. And because my nails with this condition grow so thick and fast, um, I have not noticed any damage or trouble with my nails sanding the polish off. So I just do. Your Your mileage may vary. I also wanted to address a lot of questions about my fingernails being possibly clubbed, and you should know that they're not. Um, Because of the extreme volume of comments saying that to me, I did happen to have an annual exam with my physician recently, and I brought it up with her and asked, do these look clubbed to you? Like, I do have a history of heart disease in my family, but they've also, the one, my index finger and my middle finger on both my hands curved down way more than the other nails and it's been that way since I was a kid so I was just like maybe we should look at this I don't know and so we did we did some um, blood tests we did a CT scan she looked at all of my scores and I'm fine so now you can rest easy these are my hands um, three weeks almost out from shaving this coming Tuesday will be three weeks and man do they need to be done so I'll be doing that really soon probably tomorrow How frequently I shave all comes down to personal preference, like some people with this condition don't shave at all. This is my freshly shaved hand and here they are a day after shaving. The pinkness is because the callus is so thin you can see the blood flow. But you can see here, this is two weeks since shaving, how much thicker it gets. Still can make a fist, although it needs to be with hydrated skin, not dry skin, or else it's quite uncomfortable. And I can still bend my fingers, although there's a little bit of limitation two weeks into the growth. But I can keep going. Here we are today, three weeks out from the last shave, which was January 31st. And it's starting to get quite thick. 
the parts that appear more yellow are the thickest parts and those are kind of along pressure points and then other places it's a bit thinner and you can see how flaky it becomes it won't like flake off people ask how do I eat and without this getting in my food and like it's not actively flaking off all over the place but that's mostly because I keep them moisturized all the time with lotion folks have also asked if it peels and this is an example of about how much it will peel it really doesn't get to a point where like you could just get under it and start peeling the whole thing off I wish but no it it more flakes or maybe peels in little tiny bits and it just starts to look like paws these look like bear paws to me <laughs> and it will just keep getting thicker and keep getting thicker and limit my mobility more and more and more I can still make a fist but it's starting to cut off blood circulation like this is as tight as I can go now and that even hurts and I don't want to do it for very long because I can feel that the blood flow is being blocked by the by how much callus is in the way when I make a fist and you can see really how thick it becomes this is the point three weeks in when I I've basically feel like I've had it and I can't stand it anymore and I'm gonna have to shave it I had a really busy week full of fun things that I would rather be doing than shaving my hands and also I got another cold because this is what happens when you have kids and they're playing with lots of other kids and somebody's sick so here we are it's been great um, but I can't really put it off any longer for my own comfort I could but I won't so I'll probably shave them today this is normal for me I know it it probably doesn't seem normal for you unless you're one of the few people that follow me who actually have EPPK as well, but this is just my paradigm. I don't, I don't feel sorry for myself. I don't feel sad or even frustrated usually that I have this skin. Like I don't know anything else. And this is just me taking care of my hands like I always do. I get so many comments saying, you know, a million suggestions for how I could handle this better or maybe differently. I'm not sure why people are so inclined to have me handle it differently. Like, yeah, I could use a scalpel, but that would be a lot more tricky and actually way more likely to cut me deep than this shaver, which is designed to only take off so much skin, you know, even though I use one that shaves deeper than some of the ones on the market. Like, it's a lot safer than a scalpel. And as you can see, like I'm very used to using it. I'm a natural, my strokes are delicate and deliberate and it's just not an issue for me. And yeah, there are medications I could make that I could take that would make it grow a little slower, but it, it will still grow and I will still have to take it off. And yeah, there are other lotions I could use that would make it slough off a little bit more but like not a ton more. And I think they're all really gross, awful feeling lotions. And so far in all my experience, I have not found one that I want to actually have on my hands all day, every day. So why, why, why suffer like that? People are always trying to take away my pain. And I appreciate the sympathy. I guess I do, but I also kind of resent it. Like I'm not in pain. Why would I want to take a medication that would give me all sorts of other pain in order to get rid of the skin? Like, vanity? Come on. Come on. At the end of the day, the game of life is about comfort and satisfaction. I'm comfortable. I'm satisfied. I don't need to be suffering through a medication that makes me dizzy or fatigued or that makes me gain weight or makes me have really hypersensitive skin that can't be in the sunlight. Like, no, no, I don't need that. What I need to do is take off the skin when it gets thick, like, period. I think at the end of the day, people just perceive that I'm suffering, <laughs> but I'm not suffering. And that's not some like delusion that I've convinced myself of because this is irreversible and lifelong genetic damage and there's really nothing I can do about it other than take it off. But it's true. Like, I'm not suffering. <laughs> I'm doing fine. When I decided to join TikTok, I thought I was going to be like some freak sideshow. And don't get me wrong, I know that I, I am. But like, that's all I thought it would be. I never imagined that people would be curious about the skin, that people, that some people would become obsessed and learn everything I ever said about it and start replying to the comments for me, being my little army of like truth sayers in the big ocean of misinformation and confusion around what's going on with my hands and feet. I never expected that. 
I never expected for myself to become more impassioned about my techniques. I thought maybe the opposite. I thought perhaps people would suggest tools, people would suggest creams, and I would be really eager to try all of them. But the, the opposite has happened. I, I feel more set in my ways and more confident that I, I have explored all those things and I'm right. That being said, I have found some new creams that weren't on the market when I was in my 20s and experimenting with everything that I will be trying here for TikTok. So you can look forward to that in the future. But I think ultimately what I wanted to say here was that this just is my reality. Some people think this must just take an enormous amount of time, but I'm telling you, this took three hours and it takes three hours only every couple of weeks. Yeah, there's 10 minutes here clipping my fingertips or 20 minutes there doing my fingertip skin. But like, some women spend hours every single day doing their hair and their makeup. And I'm not spending my time on that. I think that, you know, this compared to all the different ways that people spend their time making sure that they look nice and that they feel nice, this is really small in the big picture. It's just what I have to do. I have to lotion all the time, but like who doesn't really? So I really appreciate you following. And if you get it, and you honor that this works for me and it's comfortable and it's fine, I really appreciate you. I feel like you see me and understand that everyone has their struggles and this is mine and I don't even really view it as a struggle. I have other struggles, believe me. And this one just, it's like an afterthought to me. Here is a time lapse of me shaving my whole left hand while I answer this question, have you ever gone too far? And the answer is yes, certainly. When I first got this tool, I think I was 11 or 12, which would, would have been like fifth, sixth grade. And one of my parents discovered it and I began experimenting with it. This is after a childhood of having experimented with a lot of things like sanding tools and files and knives and straight face razors. And so I, I wasn't new to shaving, but none of it had ever been consistent. It hadn't stuck. We'd try it. It would be uncomfortably sensitive afterward or not very even. And my parents weren't making time to do it regularly. And I was too young to really be consistent about anything. And so for most of my childhood, my skin was just very, very thick and I wasn't used to having sensation in my hands. So when we discovered this tool, I didn't just jump out of the gates shaving like this. This is this is years and years and years of refined technique and finesse that I didn't have in the beginning. So especially when I was first learning when I was younger, I did make a lot of mistakes. Um, I was going into very thick, dry skin and um, not knowing how to use it, not knowing how to angle the blade. I would end up taking off really big, thick chunks and often going too deep. Uh, which was a struggle, but it also was a valuable learning experience because at this point I know precisely how much to take off without going too deep. I get dozens, uh, at this point I've had hundreds of messages from people with EPPK who've asked for advice and for specifically what I do so they can imitate what I'm doing. And I 100% recommend that before going in with the shaver, they have some experience sanding and filing first because if you've never taken it off at all, those nerves are going to be so hypersensitive, not having ever felt before. Your body has tuned those nerves to feel sensation through the super thick callus. So when you take the callus away, now those nerves are like on fire. And so that is a very real possibility for anybody trying this for the first time. And in fact, I got a comment yesterday of someone who did try this. They just dove right in and their hands were in a lot of pain the next day. And that really breaks my heart. I don't want anybody to be in pain. The reason that I'm I'm not is because I know just exactly how thin to shave. And as you can see here, the way that I do this, I mean, there are times when I take off big, long, smooth chunks, but I'm often going back and forth very lightly, just, just taking off the thinnest, tiniest little layers and bits so that I'm very careful not to go too deep. To understand exactly what I'm doing, you have to understand the layers of the skin. The thickest, biggest part of the skin is called the dermis, the underlayer. There's a layer below that, but the dermis is where you have all the nerve endings and all the sensation. And then what's supposed to be on top of the dermis is a super thin layer. Well, it's actually several layers of epidermis. And the thickening of my callus, the, the keratoderma, which literally means keratin skin that I have, is in that 
stratum corneum, the topmost layer of the epidermis. And so as long as I'm careful and don't just go chopping in, I can remove the stratum corneum, just the topmost layer of the epidermis down to a thickness that is very similar to the thickness of your stratum corneum. And so as long as I keep it in that range, which I can do now, um, it won't be hypersensitive. It will just feel like normal skin. Are you left-handed or right or ambidextrous? Does that affect how well you shave your hands? I get questions in this vein all the time, and I am right-handed. And um, you can see that I do a pretty good job of shaving with my left hand. That's mostly due to having done this for decades. But um, you'll see in the later part of this video that I do modify the shaving technique a little bit. When I'm shaving my dominant hand, I will begin to move my right hand more than I'm moving the blade with my left hand. Like right here, you can see an example of how like the jerking motion of for the quick little cuts is sometimes done by my dominant hand. And it just is because I have better fine motor control with my right hand. This was the point when I realized that blade was getting dull and it was time to change it out. And then now we can get a lot more precise cuts without the risk of the blade catching or kind of forcing itself through the skin, which can cause it to slip or maybe cut too deep a little bit by accident. Um, Generally, I cut out the parts where I'm grabbing the skin and pulling it out of the shaver, and I have done so in this video as well, but I've left these couple in so you can just see that like when you see the cuts in an edited video, it's because I do that a lot. Sometimes the blade just gets a little clogged because the skin isn't popping through. It does most of the time, but sometimes it doesn't. It'll catch and snag, and then I have to reach over and clear it out just like this. So I often cut that out just because these these videos on TikTok have to be short and we have precious little time to show things. And so I do usually cut that out so that you can just get to the shaving. But you'll see I have a lot of control with my left hand, even though it's not my dominant hand. And that is just due to experience. It was definitely a challenge when I first started shaving. I also want to address technique a little bit here because there's a bit of a misconception or like just a lot of questions about like how I'm not hurting myself or cutting too deep, especially along these delicate edge areas. But if you look carefully, you can see that like there's almost no pressure at all. I choose to use a very sharp, fresh blade always. When it even shows the first sign of being dull, I immediately change it because I would rather shave with a sharp blade. It allows the skin to slice off just buttery smooth and it gives me maximum control. As the blade gets duller, it immediately becomes more dangerous. And if I continue and push forward with a dull blade, it's going to take twice as long to shave and I'm probably going to cut myself more. So anyway, I do very well um, with my non-dominant hand on the bigger portion of my palm like you see here. But as I start to get into these smaller areas with more curves, you're going to see my right hand there, right there, just like that, doing a lot more of the shaving with my hand that has the most fine control and the most, you know, it's my dominant hand. So I'm just a little bit more precise with my ability to do movements with it. Um, and also, this is why usually when I'm showing hand shaving, I show my me shaving my non-dominant hand, my left hand, because when it's sped up at all, that wiggly, jerky motion I'm doing with my right hand to accomplish the shave, it does not translate well to any sort of sped up video. It, in real time, it kind of looks fine, but if you speed that up at all, it just looks like my hand is vibrating really fast while the shaver sits in place and it looks kind of bad. So usually I don't show it, but here's a great example of how I do it. So I'm just gliding the blade along very lightly. And like when I do the edges here, I mean, I am barely touching it with the blade. I'm just zip, 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 sliding along the very topmost surface. And because the blade is so sharp, it will take off these paper thin little layers. The red ring around the edge of my hands is a mark of this condition. It is just what it looks like. It's not sore or inflamed over there. It's just that's what it looks like. Um, but when I get very close to the edge, I'm not push, putting any pressure on the blade at all. I'm just letting the blade do the work as the tool just slides along the top of my hand with no pressure. When I get to these thicker areas in the middle, I do need to apply some pressure and you can sometimes see I change my grip or I'm, you can kind of see I'm pushing my right hand into the blade here to get the thicker bits off. So it's, it's a balance and 
It's an acquired skill. For anyone who happens to have EBPK who's hoping to try this, and I know most of my audience doesn't, but some of you do, I would recommend before you ever try a shave, go a few cycles with a sanding tool first. My nerves have adjusted to this level of sensitivity, but it didn't happen overnight. It happened from a lifetime of shaving. And now to me, it feels unusual to have it thick. But if you're used to it being thick, sand first. 